Hi everyone, I'm Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to make a countdown timer. I'm in Unity 2018, but this should work in 2019 and beyond as well. I'm going to be using Text Mesh Pro as well as the Text Mesh Pro Playmaker Action. So if you don't already have those installed, go ahead and do that now. And if you don't know how to do that, check out the module or the course on working with Text Mesh Pro, and that should help you get started. Then beyond that, of course, we're going to make the actual timer. And to do that, I'm just going to create an empty game object first, and I'm going to call it Timer, of course. We can add an empty FSM to it just by typing FSM, hitting Enter, and I'm going to call this Timer as well. I like to keep things simple. Now, for us to have a timer, we're going to need something to count down, a number to count down, or count up. In this case, I'm going to count down, I think. And I'm going to just choose variables here and create a variable. And I'm going to use the float because I want to count some floats. I might have some uh, unround numbers, um, unlike ints, which are just one, two, three floats, you know, end in point, one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, point, one, two, three, et cetera. So I'll call this uh, my current time. And you can call this whatever floats your boat. So I'm going to set the value, for example, at 300 at first. But I'm also going to expose this to the inspector. So if I check the inspector here, and for some reason I have two, oops. Now that I've exposed this to the inspector, I can choose controls, and you will see here the current time. This means you can adjust it again from the inspector, so that you don't necessarily have to go into the FSM each time to make small changes. Now the very first state I'm going to have, I want some sort of a countdown system. So I want to count down this variable. And to do that, we're just going to choose actions and type float to see what we have. Now we have float, add, compare, operator, subtract. Subtract seems like it's going to work for me. We could also use float add and use a negative number. So we could add negative one, add negative two. But we can just use float subtract to keep things nice and clean. Now what float variable do we want to subtract from? That's right, my current time and the amount we're going to subtract is just one. We're going to do this every frame so that it runs continuously, as well as we're going to do per second. It's going to remove one per second. That means this is 500 seconds of time. So you may have to do a little math there to figure out exactly how many minutes or hours you want to count down from, but I think you can probably handle that. So let's make sure we have debug ticked off here, which means that we can see the number go down, and we'll hit play. Okay, and you can now see that it's counting down once per second. Again, if you don't have debug on, you won't see the value here. Well, this is all fine and dandy, but now it's just in our editor, in our inspector here, but not actually in the scene in any way. Now, we want to use Text Mesh Pro to put this onto the scene, and we could use either Text Mesh um, Pro or the Text Mesh Pro U GUI. I'm just going to use the standard Text Mesh Pro for the moment because that's going to work and it's enough for me. You could do this using the U GUI. Again, reference the Text Mesh Pro uh, module if you need to know more about this. However, in the meantime, I'm just going to right click here, choose 3D object, and say Text Mesh Pro Text. And I still need to uh, import the essentials here, so I'm going to click that and it's going to import all the essentials. This is the first time I've used Text Mesh Pro in this specific project. And there we go, we have some sample text. I'm going to click F and then just sort of rotate around until I find sort of a, an angle that I can read. We've got some sample text here. So let's check the inspector. I'm going to call this time or timer. Just so I know what I'm dealing with to keep everything nice and clean. So how do we get our text here, or our time, onto the text itself? Well, the thing is with Text Mesh Pro and any kind of text in C Sharp or Playmaker, whatever it is, we can't simply just put an int or a float into text. We actually have to convert this into a string. So we're going to need a way to do that. So let's check the actions first here and see what we have. Let's see. I think there's a specific action called for this called convert seconds to string. 
bam, that works for us. And you can see that it has a specific formatting here. And what's this, what this is going to do is change our string of seconds into, uh, I believe here, we have hours, minutes, seconds, and we'll see in a minute. So what is the second variable we want to use? We're going to use my current time. The string variable, we're going to need to make a new string variable. We can just call this time in string, whatever you want to call it. It's all good. Make sure you click off every frame and we have debug on and let's hit play to see our result. And here you can see that this is actually 8 minutes and 17 seconds and it also counts down our milliseconds nicely as well. So I don't actually want hours. I'm going to remove that by just scooping out this part, I think. Let's see. And that works for me, all good. Okay, so the next thing we want is to actually get this string onto our screen in some way. And of course we're gonna use Text Mesh Pro to do that, so let's just uh, search, I think it's called Set Text. So let's just check under the Text Mesh Pro Basic here, and it's called Set Text Mesh Pro Text. Boy. Okay, so it's telling us this game object requires a text mesh pro component. Because it's using the owner, it's actually looking at the timer. We want to feed it this text mesh pro object, so we're going to choose specify game object. Just drag and drop that in there. The text we want to feed is we're going to click this little icon here so that we can get our string. Make sure we hit every frame and then push play. And there we go, we have our timer on the screen, although it's sort of uh, ugly, but hey, it works. Okay, let's see if we can extend this just a little bit farther so that we can do something with their timer. Okay, so maybe we want something to happen when we actually reach zero, so it's important that our timer actually has some function beyond just timing down. And to do that, we need to compare the time, and we want to see, of course, if it equals zero, or maybe we can even have it compare another, another time, such as uh, 10 seconds, so we could have a warning, you know, like a beep 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 sound play, or like Super Mario, where the uh, audio speeds up, or something like that, to let us know that time is about to run out. So to do this, we need to compare this float with another number. So let's just type in float compare, and see what we have, and lo and behold, we have our float compare action. So the first float we want to compare against is our time. And we're just going to use my current time. And we're going to compare it against one. We're not going to add any tolerance. This is a little bit of leeway. But what we're going to have is if it equals zero, we're going to have a new event called time up. And it says you do not have this event yet. So click here to add it. And there it goes. And we also want it to be less than time up should fire. Now, why do we want a less than? It's because sometimes um, the time will actually get slightly below zero, depending on your frame rate, before it realizes it. So if it's looking for exactly zero, the tolerance may be not enough. But we don't want it to fire before it's zero, so I'm not going to adjust any tolerance here. I'll just say if it's equal to or less than zero, let us know. So we also want to add a every frame here. And by holding control and dragging out here, we'll have a new state. And we can have this called like time finished. And we maybe we'll play a sound there in the future or something. So let's give this a go. We'll check the inspector. We'll just give it, um, you know, five seconds of time and make sure that this is working for us. And we're counting down three, two, one, zero, and we can see that it has stopped. If you look at this here, it's actually slightly less than zero as we suspected. 
although it is showing zero on the screen. So on your time finish, you might want to adjust this so that it says you know zero or time up exactly, rather than have um, this sort of negative zero milliseconds. Okay, so what if we want to count up timer? You know, sometimes we want you know, not a count down, but a count up, and that's really easy to do. Instead of float subtract, we're just going to go to our actions and choose float add, as you can guess, and we'll drag this up to the start. And what float variable variable are we going to use? We're going to use my current time, and we're going to remove the float subtract. We want to add one every second. And we also want to set this variable starting at zero. Of course, in this case, let's see, we don't trigger accidentally into time finish. Nope, we didn't. And now we're counting up. So there you go, everyone. Uh, simple way to create a simple timer to use in your game. And to adjust the format, again, we can just remove some of these options if you only want it to be seconds or you want to, for example, have instead of M, you can have minutes or just remove the M altogether.